Hey everyone, this is Ben back with you in the Midwest Model Shop. So in this episode, I'm going to go ahead and put on some of the photo etch detail, uh, the nameplates around the ship, just some little things I need to knock out, and then we're going to primarily focus on the poop deck, aft, well deck area of the ship. Not a lot of huge progress there, but some bigger things that um, need to be worked on. It's kind of that exciting stage, I'm looking at the model over here, where we're moving away from just having a big hall that we've been looking at this whole time and we're starting to put some of the more interesting things on. It's kind of a transitional point in the build that I'm pretty pumped about. So we'll address some of those things there, a shorter episode. Also, quickly I'm going to announce, um, <laughs> despite, because I don't have enough things to do already, uh, we've created a Facebook page, the Midwest Model Shop. You can go ahead on Facebook and just search for that. We'll post pictures and things up there. Um, comment questions things about builds i'd like to see builds that you folks are working on uh, post pictures of your progress there that you have going on if you want to shoot me a message on there go ahead and message the midwest model shop or reply and uh yeah just 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 another another thing so if you like to do that check it out uh otherwise oh at the end of this episode or in the middle of the episode somewhere in there uh you're going to hear more tales from the titanic from nora she's got some stuff cooked up for that and that's it Let's get into the build. Okay, ship's upside down again because I forgot to install the Pontos um, name back here. And if I if I wait too much longer, I'm not going to be able to flip the ship over and, and do this. So uh, we're going to work on this detail right now. And what I've done is I've gotten out the piece and I've gone ahead and pre-painted it right there. I'll uh, go ahead and get you a better shot of it here in a second. All right, so... There's a little detail, and I, I painted it yellow uh, with my enamel paint, Titanic Liverpool. I've left the brass connecting points on because I want to be able to see them when I glue it to the hull so I know where to put the uh, super glue, and then I'll go back over with some black paint and touch up. These should be recessed, but they're raised instead, and I think uh, instead of making you a new plate, that was the best that Pontos could do, and, and I think it's fine. If you... Uh, get the full stern kit from Mini Brass. You'll have recess detail, uh, and it looks very nice. Looks just like the real thing. But this is what Pontos provides, and this is what a lot of you have. Uh, and so that's what we're going to use. And then also up there, you've got Titanic. This goes across uh, the bow, the bow nameplates. There's two of them right there. So we'll let that go ahead and dry up, and then we'll get them cut out. And what we'll do, since I'm talking here is we will tape them into position once the paint's dry. That way you can get exactly where you want, you're super happy with it, and you come back with some thin CA glue and touch the brass so it affixes itself to the hull. So yeah, let's, that's what we're gonna do. Okay, here we are. This is on the port side, sorry, starboard side. And as you can see, uh, if we zoom out a little bit, Looks pretty good. You can make out the lines just a little. I've got to add some more paint, but back up here it's fine. Uh, when we zoom way in, oh, it looks like I gotta touch up the end and maybe the C a little bit, but this is just a one side. Anyway, you guys get the idea. Let's take a look at the uh, stern real quick here. Okay, here we are in the back of the ship. I think it looks really nice. Um, not as nice as if it had been recessed detail, but that's what you get. Um, here's a coin, or Aussie coin, for comparison. I think it looks good. Uh, we have the same thing. We need to touch up some of the yellow. Um, we'll have to add a little bit to the black. Uh, I think it looks really good when you back up. Not too bad. You can see that I kind of didn't do a great job centering my two windows that I cut out here, because I think these four had to be added because they were missing uh, from the ship. But there you go. I, I think it looks good. We'll touch it up as we move along. Anyway, that that's important to knock this out because if I keep the ship upright to work on things, trying to put this detail on from this direction is difficult. So anyway, that's why we had to take care of that. All right, pressing on. All right, so because I was monkeying around with the folks, so I thought, hey, we should move back here to the poop deck. Uh, and start working on getting all this stuff fitted up. So, just some initial things here. Um, I, I didn't, I didn't get the orange painted on here yet. I, I screwed that up. But um, I did go ahead and put 
a little bit of the orange. I'm calling it orange. The whole red, red along here. Uh, we've got our little photo etch parts that will go in front of it. This thing, and it goes like right here. So I don't know if you'll see that back here. I didn't know if the hull red along the bulwarks extended or not, but I decided that I would go ahead and put it on there. Um, we are lighting this, so I'm gonna run uh, my fiber optics through these portholes, and I'm gonna decide what to do about these windows back here, because I'm not seeing anything in Pontos instructions about window frames. Uh, and it is kind of way in the back and you're not going to see it so I think I just need to get some illumination up there also uh, right here there's these little deck houses like yay and they've got photo etch detail on top of them and they have little lights little windows there too and I'd like them illuminate because they'll throw light on the deck so I've painted them up uh, what I'll, the plan is is to run my fiber optic through there and then drill holes straight down because, believe it or not, uh, when this is in place, right here, it just clears the edge of that deck and goes straight down and there's lights there shining up. So we should get our illumination that we want. Now, the only other thing of note, right here we have a couple deck fittings that go in here. These are like the first ones I've made up. Um, and they're here. I painted them. And these are not the kit parts. These are the 3D printed from China pieces. Uh, if you have the KA kit, you're going to have similar, very similar looking pieces as this. And I'm just showing them off here because the detail on them is really, really nice, just like on the K kit. I did not do a comparison, compare and contrast with the kit parts because all you need to know is these are better. If you have them, that's great. Um, and then you get an idea of the scale. The only thing is these, <laughs> these are primed and painted with like two or three coats. The orange color, they still have the slightest orange hue. Uh, and it's okay, but it's like the, the orange color resin looks phenomenal. You can really see the pieces and they look great, but it's not a good color for painting white. Uh, is just kind of my only comment about that. Now, the other comment I had back here, I, I prepped this deck before I knew I was getting those parts. So see right here, that little nub and then this little nub, those are actually sticking up a little bit proud of the deck. And since I'm not using the kit part, I need to smooth that off so that these can sit flush. I know this is the wrong one, but you know, it won't sit flush. So if you're using the KA parts or you or the order the parts from China 3D, when you put these in, just go ahead and smooth those all the way off. So uh, let's see here. I need to finish painting the orange, or sorry, the hall red along here. I need to get our fiber optics ran. I need to decide what I'm going to do for lighting the window. I'll probably just put glass back in here and then see if I can get some light already kind of illuminates up. And then uh, we'll get holes drilled here for these pieces. And once they're set, we'll go ahead and get this glued in and then we'll have part of the hall like locked in and, and ready to go. Um, I'm not putting all of these parts on here ahead of time like a lot of you are doing. And the reason for that is over here we have a ton of work that has to happen on the superstructure. And I've noticed, like if I go down like this, that I have a tendency to like reach over this way and reach over that way. And then my hand would end up knocking off some of that detail. And, and we don't want to do that quite yet. So, okay, enough talking, press on. All right, so uh, in an effort to light those windows back here, which just have little frames around them, uh, I went ahead and put some foil tape in here and on the bottom of this to reflect some light up front to try, again, what we're doing is trying to minimize using any other LEDs than the strip lights that are in here. It mostly worked out just fine. Um, it's not a high illumination area, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, the next step though, well, just kind of a thought. So 
I noticed some people talking about how the kit part sits on top of the scale deck deck and it raises it up a little bit. Well, of course it does. There's a little bit extra right there. So I thought, well, I'll just remove that part of the deck and see if it sits flush how we want. So if you look, you can see carefully here that I've marked off with a pencil the edge of the scale deck deck. I'm going to take a very sharp X-Acto blade, remove it, and then we'll take our piece and we'll drop it back on here and see uh, how it fits. Uh, then we'll continue with putting the little LED strips in for these pieces and then a couple of portholes on the front here to illuminate it and get the poop deck glued into position. So yes, let's grab our scalpel. Okay, so now we're going to glue the poop deck on. Uh, so I've gone ahead and put our little fixtures in place. And I've got my two LED leads, we'll call them that, for these portholes that go on the front. The thing is, they got to go down into these two little holes that I drilled right here. So that gets a little bit tricky. Also, you can see my lines. I've removed the wood from the scale deck deck so that this thing just sits flush uh, as the kit was meant to. It was no big deal to cut that all out. So to start off, though, we're going to apply glue to the hull not glue to this because I'm going to have to maneuver and get these little leads down in there and the whole thing will lock into place and yeah it's going to be a little bit tricky but we are going to use some of the good old fashioned testers orange glue um, because I know that it will set up Four. this is a mess <laughs> that would explain it but it it works well for big pieces when you need like the glue this. to work, yeah. I mean, I'm still gonna use the Tamiya thin. Right. But I need this to... Get the big stuff. Just kinda get it locked into place here. Okay, okay. now, and I've got my other Tamiya glue ready. Here's the tricky part. So I don't know if you could try and come in here and see. So these leads got to go in these holes but these walls have to end up after my fixtures here. So I'll start with this one. Bend it and get started. I'll grab this one. Oh, I can see. Sit. Get started. Good. Now I got to come this has to go down, and I gotta come back. Hey. It will go down. Oop. Let's see, oh, I was hitting there. There Look at and that. there. There we go. Okay. So now. Boom. Poop deck. Yeah, poop deck. And poo on the poop deck. Ooh. Yeah, we're working on here. All right, I'm gonna grab some of my. This is the uh, the stuff that sets up fast. That's the stuff I almost dumped. Yep. Our battery's flashing. All right, I'll drop it in there since we're running out of battery. Um, anyway, we're gonna keep gluing this around since the battery's down on the camera here, and that's it. The the poop deck's installed, and we'll trim off these parts and we'll get the battery changed and I'll recap and move on to the other stuff that's going on here. Pressing on. Okay, so we have our deck on and we have a clamp on. And the reason is I couldn't get the side walls here to come in and meet the kit part like I wanted to. Uh, so I clamped it and I put some glue on and we're good. Uh, let's see, you can see here, I know the light's kind of bright in the camera. There we go, we got our two LEDs to light up. Not seeing any light leaks in there. Not a lot of light coming through the back windows here. At least it's kind of hard to see, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I did get here, while we're talking about it, a couple of scuffs on my deck accidentally. I don't even know how I did that. But um, yeah, I guess we're gonna put some people there. Or if I was really upset, you could just follow the lines and cut it out and then insert another piece of wood deck there and you'd be fine. So also while we're up here, uh, you can see I've got my holes cut for these two pieces that go down inside. Um, 
here's one of them with LEDs ready to go and so the idea is they'll just drop down in here I'm trying to do all this while I'm talking it's facing the wrong way but then we get some light if I do this right a little bit I hope we'll adjust those if we have to um, there uh, that's the idea anyway so Anyway, I wanted to show you that. Hopefully that makes a lot of sense. This is how we get our poop deck installed, and we'll, we'll work on the rest of this stuff. Okay, press it on. So, in this edition of Tales from the Titanic, uh, we picked this up the other day. A little magazine right off the magazine rack, and that's where I found this article that I'm going to share. Uh, I find these things interesting. Uh, we all saw the movie, Leonardo, Rose, the whole nine yards, but this kind of stuff truly just astounds and captivates me. And I'm going to share this with you because I find it very interesting. Perhaps no component of the Titanic is more, no more notorious than its 15 watertight bulkheads, massive steel walls extending from the double bottom of the ship to the upper deck forward and to the saloon deck aft. That might as well be Mandarin for me. These walls divided the lower decks into 16 compartments which were considered watertight because if a breach occurred in any of them, steel doors could quickly be closed by switches controlled from the bridge, keeping a flooded compartment contained. That's pretty high tech. Yeah, they're fancy. <laughs> <laughs> but the bulkheads had a fatal flaw. They did not extend all the way to the first continuous watertight deck. The designers were too worried for two reasons. The height of the bulkheads was far above the vessel's waterline and also exceeded the requirements of the Board of Trade, which oversaw all British ship design. The argument against extending them higher was that passengers would have to go up and down ladders to pass through the ship, which would be unacceptable on a passenger vessel. Do you know what's unacceptable? Sinking. Sinking is unacceptable. A.K.A. founder? Yes. F foundering. Is yes. that a word? Yes. Foundering? foundering? Foundering. Sinking or breaking. <laughs> the sequence of events on the night of April 14th could not have been foreseen at the time, writes McCluskey. The degree of damage sustained and the manner in which it occurred was unimaginable and therefore could not have been anticipated or allowed for. Designers were protecting against accidents from the past. A collision with a ship or an object like a large rock that would puncture one or two compartments not an extended scraping along an iceberg that would tear gaping holes. Gaping. Gaping. You know what gaping is. We do. Gaping holes in six compartments. What the fork. When the ship began to sink at the bow from these catastrophic holes, water overflowed over the top of the bulkheads further back into the ship, causing it to founder. founder. Yeah, we found her. There she is. Causing it to founder. What was that definition again? To sink. To break down or fail. Caused it to founder. The One gaping holes. Cruise. The gaping how holes. How much was the ticket? <gasps> oh. Stand by. So another little fun fact that had my jaw on the floor. The ticket prices back then were 30 to 870 pounds. In today's money, that would be 3,500 to 100 thousand dollars and then your ship founders dollars not not pesos not yen dollars yeah to founder to just end up part of a foundering ship with gaping holes gaping good job baby okay i've spent the last like 15 minutes trying to get the camera set up to give you this shot. Uh, this is what it looks like inside of there. Um, now you can't see it and let me shut off one more light. There we go. Uh, there is, because someone asked about the slightest amount of light leak on the right side there at the base and it's more prominent on the other side if you put your head at the right angle to discover it and I just for the life of me can't show it because it's you know um, 
this pretty much worked out the way that we wanted to. And I'll try and cover up the light coming out of the hatch there. You can see we get a nice look. And even though, I, so I frosted those windows in the back there, and even though the light's not super bright, um, get the focus here, you know, it looks, it looks really good, I think. So that's what we're after. Since I can't get the light leak situation to show up, uh, I'm just going to show you my proposed solutions. And honestly, it's just not enough for me to care on my kit. All right, but some of you have real problems, so we, we need to talk. Okay, here we are on the other side, and I think this is our starboard side. You can make out that light leak just, man, it is just ever so. And I had to get the camera way down and adjust the angle for you to see in there to check it out. So I came up with a couple of solutions. Uh, the first one, you could paint a very, very tiny piece of styrene. And I would paint it probably the deck wood color because there's supposed to be a piece of trim in there. And then if you stick it in here with your tweezers, and you're gonna have to put some glue in there in advance, so you can see that in the shot, <clears throat> you can see the white piece of styrene and it's already blocking the light. And that would fix uh, part of your problem. Now the other option, we'll try this, depending on the size of your light leak, here is a piece of decking uh, from the Scale Dex deck. It's just a, there's so much extra, you could go ahead and cut out whatever you need. And you're left to put a little piece of glue on it. I'm just going to do this for demonstration purposes. If you slide in there and you glue it down, your light leak will disappear. So, uh, for those of you who put big light bulbs back here, like these shining lights out, oh, it looks like the vacuum cleaner's going. Uh, anyway, that that is my proposed solution for this. So now let's press on to the next trying subject. Okay, now to try and explain all this so that it makes sense. Uh, here's our aft area for the B deck. I think this is the, or not, sorry, C deck. And I think this is where the second class, like smoking lounge and hangout areas. Uh, I think we have to get this painted up, photo etch on and glued into place and installed. And that actually will allow us to work on the bulwarks here with the photo etch detail and get these hatches on and clean up some of the stuff on this lower well deck here. The reason is I have to figure out the next step. Uh, some of you recall in a previous video that Neil from Woody's Models Works graciously sent photo etch detail to put on the upper superstructure. So here's the thing though, if you could see this, his photo etch replaces up here. Everything from here up all of this comes off and there's a couple of ways to do it you can sand all this off smooth and just slap his photo etch on over the top which i suppose would be fine uh, or what you do and i'll see if this put this on the camera here but i made a mark because we were talking about it you see that line you cut straight across at that height all of this off and uh, then you would attach his photo etch to that remaining surface and the subsequent decks up above, which is what we're going to attempt to do. And this is my mock-up backup piece. So I think if we put this piece in first and get it all done, that will anchor where this part goes. I could go ahead and slide it in like so. It, it goes right there. Then, that would allow me the option, the opportunity to put this deck on and solve another problem. Because this deck is solid. And I had talked about trying to just utilize the lights that were down inside of the ship and run photo etch lines down there to kind of light everything. And the idea being, uh, I would run photo, sorry, I keep saying photo etch. The fiber optic lines down have it come up and provide more ambient lighting that's realistic. Uh, if that doesn't work though, and we, we do have to figure all that out, uh, I have my two leads here and I can go ahead and add a ton more of LED light strips up here 
to provide more light for these upper decks. And maybe we'll end up doing that in sp specific areas and, and feeding into those light sources to continue lighting things. So that's what I have to sort out. Um, so I think we'll go ahead and detail this up next and put it in and maybe work on the bulwarks over here and that will kind of wrap things up for what we got to do here because then the next part is going to be a huge major segment. Okay, pressing on. Okay, we've got a couple pieces. This is the photo etch bulwarks. Uh, we got to get those primed up. And then here's this back piece. Uh, got to get primed up too. I put in the windows that Ponto said to throw in here, so that's them. I haven't monkeyed with the doors because Pontos doesn't say what to do with the doors. And I, I don't even know what this piece is called. It lets you into the second class entrance in the back of the ship right there. Um, right here, this is the second class entrance the, like to the second class library. It goes right here and everything, and there's some doors. But I had a really hard time finding... Uh, in my KA instructions, I couldn't find what windows went there, and I, I did this on my client's build, and I don't even know how I got the answer for his, because I wanted to put maybe different doors on there, but if any of you know where in the instructions for the Mark 1K set, this stuff's at, what page, please comment down below. I'd really appreciate it um, so what other people could know. But anyway, we're going to prime these up. I'll mask it, get the paint on, and we'll get it installed because once these bulwarks are installed there's a bunch of little detail and deck stuff that can go in um, this is my plans that I'm working off of but uh, over here we got all that detail and stuff we got to do so yeah let's paint it up and uh, we'll come back with these things ready to install Okay, never mind. Found it. Uh, it was in page 13 of the Ponto, or I'm sorry, the KA instructions right here. When you're looking at the forward bridge area, right underneath it is the second class entrance room, and that you know that makes total sense because the second class entrance is here, right next to the bridge over there. I guess on an interstellar scale, they coexist. So yeah, good. Page 13. Okay, so this worked out, um, figuring that out in the instructions, because these there are no Pontos included doors. You've just got these kit doors, and I primed this white so they're kind of hard to see, but uh, as you can tell, there you go. They're just plain Jane. Um, you know, the, the, if this was on the Missouri, I'd be like, oh, that's a nice door. As a second class passenger on the Titanic entering the smoking lounge after having come outside to get a better cell phone signal, I'd be pretty disappointed that that was the door. Fortunately, uh, China 3D printed parts, uh, they have a door set and it's pretty dope. And I'm pretty sure these doors right here, they closely match what's in the K set because uh, I couldn't find any immediate reference on which style door, but these are the ones. So I'm gonna cut those out and four of them, I guess, and get them primed up and get those stuck on the door. Okay, we're doing this in wobbly mode. These are uh, painted and they look nice. So on the back here, what I'm doing for now, you can kind of make it out. Uh, I put in, this isn't acetate, or I guess it is. It's just clear plexi. And then if you look, I've, I don't know if it shows up very well, I've scratched it because if we hold it up to the light, I just want it to look, see how it's just glowing back in there? That's what we're going for, just that glowed look. And the reason for that is right here, this is the second class like lounge area. Let me show you blueprints. This is the area we're talking about. It's this, you know, these are the doors, this is the wall right here. So when you walk in uh, through the glass that you see right here, it's actually nothing to see. There's just this big promenade and there's a wall here and there's a wall here. This is just all open. Um, this would all be interesting, but you're not gonna see this. So instead of worrying about creating detail in there right now, uh, I'm just gonna make the glass glazy hazy, whatever you want to call it, glazed over so that the light fully illuminates 
but there's nothing to see. And this also, the cranes are gonna be in the way. This is a terrible spot, and there's gonna be stairs on top of it. You're not gonna see through those windows. These windows are a different story. This one is not gonna do anything. So for right now, uh, I've gone ahead and just, like I said, put that little glaze on them so that it works. So let's, let's, glue, let's glue these parts in. All right, uh, we're gonna go ahead and install the bulwarks first. Everything kind of goes on top of them. There's a whole bunch of details that get attached. And these are, these are specific to a side, so. Then we get to put the details on here and the waterway. And then that will make it so that we can drop our bulkhead in place. That's what we want to do next. Okay, sorry about the furnace, but uh, the bulwarks are installed. And there we've gone ahead and put on the little stanchions. And there's like a couple little cleats right there on the left side there. Um, these are not painted yet. They're all silver and the original P color. I'm gonna get some paint on them, but I wanted you to see it before we painted it in case that detail disappeared. And also you can see our little waterways. So uh, yeah, and then we can go ahead and I think and glue in our bulkhead right here. Okay, time to install the second class bulkhead. Now we're just gonna get some glue on here. All right, here we go. Just like that. Uh, I want it upright and plumb because like I said the uh, deck attaches to here and everything going back. Basically this is the this is the key for the pieces that we're gonna need for the next part of the hall, the next deck that goes up uh, for what we're gonna cut away to put in the photo etch from Neil Woody's works uh, model works. A detail these set so we need to have this piece installed and ready to go and that about takes care of it a little bit of extra glue there that's okay okay looks good so that about wraps up our uh, detail there I've got to go ahead and paint the little stands along the edge here we need to get the covers on um, the cargo hatches and that's it everything else that goes in here I'm gonna worry about after after the fact after we get the rest of these details in um, these bigger pieces because I want it protected and the ship there's still a lot of moving around that's gonna take place so anyway uh, I think that's it for now I hope everyone has a happy holiday and we'll come back next time when we've got some more detail and stuff figured out. Everyone take care. Bye-bye. What, what does founder mean? I mean, I gotta Google that. That's not what this says. See, when a ship gets stuck, they said, oh, I found her. <laughs> That's a good one. Good one. You gonna be here all week? I am. All right. Don't, don't forget to tip the waitress. Tip the waitresses. Yep. And, uh, try the meatloaf. It's really good. Cheers. What is the naval term founder name? Put in the right pretext. To sink. To break down or fail. Founder. Okay. Founder. Roll. Okay. Let's go ahead and start. Are you already recording? <laughs>